Pair Eyewear helps you see what's possible. With one pair, you get infinite possibilities, starting at just $60, including your prescription. I love the versatility my friends bring to every situation and outfit just for me. Pair provides a curated selection of base frames for men, women, and kids starting at $60, including wide frames to fit every face. One pair, infinite possibilities. Go to PairEyewear.com and use code SIBLING15 for 15% off your first pair. And support the show by mentioning that Sibling Rivalry sent you in your post-checkout survey. That's P-A-I-R-Eyewear.com, code SIBLING15. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting. I love how my Fume looks and feels in my hand. It is lightweighted, perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. Start the year off right with a good habit by going to tryfume.com slash rivalry and getting their journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use our code rivalry to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Start the good habit at tryfume.com slash rivalry to save 10% off the journey pack today. Bob, what? I'm a Creole banjee bitch from Louisiana. Just so you know, next time you try to start with me, just remember those little facts. Not literally, not one of those things is true. I am Creole. You're not. Yes, yeah, Saint Lucia is. Saint Lucia is a Creole. Are you? We 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 literally speak Creole. Creole okay. is Creole is not just it's not just Louisiana or New Orleans. Like that is not just what Creole means. Okay, continue. I am Banji. You literally call me Banji several times on this podcast. I mean, that's what you always call me, but continue. And I am a bitch. So I'm three out of the four. That, that, that one I agree with. <laughs> but you don't want to call, call me Banji. I actually I'll say that you are from the upper crust. You are the 1%. I never call you Banji. You Bob, call me Banji. Uh, Bob, I don't call you good. I don't call you Gid, and I don't call you Banji. That's what you, you call me. You have called me Banji. You have absolutely called me Banji on this podcast. You have. I have not, but I'll give you to the end of time to find a single clip of me ever. I'm not going to comb our footage. I'm not going to go to the catacombs of Sibling Rivalry. If I was you, I'm, I wouldn't comb through you because you won't find it. I'm not going to go through the catacombs of Sibling Rivalry to try to find this. Cause, but you, uh, can y'all please? Also, anyone who knows the, the episode, can y'all please write? Type of, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Don't, no, don't ask them to do it if you're not want to do it. You ask them to go on a wild goose chase. They're not a wild goose chase. They'll know it. They want to find. They'll know it. You call me ghetto on the podcast. Oh yeah, you are you absolutely you are you are hood. You are a hood, and I have absolutely called you that one thousand percent. A person of mixed European and black descent. Are you of mixed European and black descent? Yes, my lineage is yes. We have we have, we have we have we 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 have some Europeans up in my up up in my bloodline. Interesting. Um, have you been enjoying Beyonce's new um, country album? I have been thoroughly enjoying the album. I listened to the album once the first time through, and I list and I liked it like no skips for me from like one from from American Requiem through Daughter, the one where she sings. She sings. She sings Cato Mio Ben, one of the songs. Which for any opera singer, anyone who studied classical music. You get this book. It's like a rite of passage for classical singers. You get this book of twenty four Italian art songs. And you have to like learn the, the the one the first one everyone anyone who studied classical music learns Cato Mio Ben, so it's like so seeing her put this song into this like this it's 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 hilarious but also fucking brilliant it's great. I you know I tried to listen to it and I realized I, I realized I don't like country music like that like I like country songs but I've never listened to an entire country album and when I sat down and I was listening I was like oh my god this is just all this is a lot of this is a lot of country music and i was like i just don't like but i do like some of the songs but i but i i am not i am not a country music fan like that i like some country songs but not like that that's too much for me yeah, like, you know dolly parton, I'm, dolly parton just released a um a rock album did she and i started yes yeah, she did it, it has 30 tracks on it and i started to listen to it and i was like i don't like rock and roll like this i like some rock and roll songs but i do not like it enough to listen to 30 rock and roll songs back to back and i just don't like country music like that so i will i probably will not be giving cowboy carter a ton over the listens to be honest you know there are a few are, well, well, before i say that they're like beyonce's fucking broken again crazy records of this cowboy carter is is her biggest debut on amazon music with the first day global streams of all of her albums and the most first day streams of any country album by any female artist 
Also, just being featured on this album, you have three people. You have Tanner, Tanner Adele, Shabuzi, and Willie Jones. Like, <laughs> a feature on this album can increase your monthly listeners by 400%. Tanner Adele went from 709,000 to 3.5 million. Shabuzi went from 1.7 to 4.2 million. Willie Jones went from 30, uh, 347,000 listeners to 2.2 million listeners in the cu- in a couple of days that this album has come out. So, and also just all the thus stuff that it's doing for black female country singers. Like her album is highlighting that and putting respect on their name that they wasn't getting before. So just all brilliant and beautiful all the way all the way around, and it's just the impact of fucking Beyonce. It's fucking fierce. It's beautiful. Well, that's that's amazing. I'm glad that country music is having this this moment. Um, mm-hmm. I, I am gonna say it. I said it before. I'm a little Beyonce Taylor Swift out. I can, I don't think I can hear it anymore. But everything mm-hmm. I've learned about Beyonce and Taylor Swift in the past like two years has been against my will. Like the Swifties you- and the Beehive are like forcing me to learn all this Beyonce and Taylor Swift stuff, and I'm like. I just feel like every time I turn on my phone or look on the TV or go on Twitter or go on TikTok, somebody's talking about Taylor Swift or Beyonce. Which, by the way, I'm happy that they're having their moments. Obviously, I, I, I want, I, I, I certainly don't have any desire to, for them to not have massive moments. But it is just like, oh my, I'm like, oh my God, this is a lot of Taylor Swift and Beyonce. You mean you like about when you tripped, or is that not for the podcast? Do what? When we tripped at M's party? No, we. Oh, when I, when I, I tripped, niggas, that were I mean, I, I can tell, I can tell, I can tell during the during, during the Patreon. School. It's not that great of a story, but I can certainly tell it during the during the Patreon um on talk story. Yeah. Oh, when you when you say you're learning like 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 like, like you're learning against like you like you feel like you're in the group chat with uh with uh, Will and Jada. I've not done any research on these people, but I've learned a lot about them. That's what I mean against my will. Like I've and I you're just so you're just over it. You're like I just can't. It's not that I'm over it. Just that it's just that I'm I'm not particularly interested in it. And I wasn't not interested before, but it's just like, oh, I, I know, I know more stuff about Taylor Swift now. Now I know who she's dating. Now I know how many shows she's done. Now I know how many. Now I know how much money she's giving her truck drivers. Now I know. Now I know that she handwrites letters to people. Now I, I'm like, why do I know all this stuff about Taylor Swift? And I'm not even doing. I'm not even doing a monochrom of research. I'm just opening my phone and I'm being just inundated with information about these specific two artists. I think it's because your followers and who you follow. Like you follow people oh. like me and lots of gay queer people who love Taylor and Beyonce, and they are also two. I would say the two biggest female pop artists out here right now. I'm trying to think who is bigger than those two. Someone who is becoming a really close contender who is, <laughs> who could probably get me to listen to, to another country album is SZA. If SZA put out a country album, I would probably listen to it. Not probably. I will listen to it. Do you think SZA is putting out a country album? I don't think so, but I'm just saying, in the vein of Beyonce putting out a, I, I, like, if you asked me two, three years ago, is, uh, is Beyonce doing a country album? I would say, no, although that's fucking weird. But here we are, and it's fucking brilliant. And SZA is someone that I could, that will put out a country album. I wish you put out a country album, and I'll probably love it. But much success to those two. They obviously they don't need. They don't need. They certainly don't need my support to have a massive fan base. And and I think there's some good songs on um, on on the. I have not listened to. I have not listened to a Taylor Swift album since the one that had "Look What You Made Me Do" on it. But I'm sure that there's some certified bangers on whatever her last album was called. Did you listen to the? Did you? Oh, SZA. So we'll make this really simple. Y'all leak three songs from the deluxe. At this point, y'all can keep the throwaways and leaks. I'll be starting Lana from scratch. Shit. Okay, so SZA's gonna put out a a, um, a deluxe version of her album called Lana. And when I tell you, like, all the songs are getting leaked. So now she's just starting over. That's annoying. Ah. Uh, uh. Yes, someone at her camp is not uh, keeping their their lips very tight. But uh, this is not about. Uh, wait, wait. Last thing I want to say. About- Did you listen to the Jolene cover? Um, no, I didn't make it that far. The flip is. I'll get there. I'll the flip is so good. It's instead of like Jolene. Do Jolene yeah, yeah. It's, it's like bitch, don't fucking touch my man. I heard that part. It's like bitch, you better not fucking touch my man or some shit like this. It's not. It's less begging and it's more like bitch, don't touch my man. Don't do it. Could could you ever see yourself writing a song like that? Like bitch, don't touch my man. No, that's not really. Uh, I'm. I don't really. I'm not really like. That's not my personality. Like, if my man wants to touch someone else, then he should go touch someone else. And if my man wants to leave me for someone else, I would not fight to keep him. Work. I would um, be like, well, then maybe you and that person should be happy together, and maybe that's for the best. Would you fight for any of these queens on the, on 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 the season? Um, I 
don't know. Let's see. I've, I've certainly argued about some of them, so maybe we can get into some of that today. So we are on episode 13 of season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race. We are reviewing the Makeover episode. This is a episode to uh, promote the mm. Vegas live show, low-key a little bit. And as we are getting out of the um, the lip sync, we Dawn has just gone home to body uh, lip sync. Oh, my God. You love it. Thank you for promoting my song. She did. I think when Dawn got home, I know the first thing she did was she played Body by Monet Exchange. Thank you, Bob. That is true. The lip sync to Body by Monet Exchange. Okay, um, that's the question. Would you gag over. if what what if what if what if what if um bitch like me was was a was a lip sync song to show? Would you would you die? I'll be so fierce. A bitch like me is a stunty queen. I don't want me clean. You're about how you smoking on the bunty queen? I'm a queen in the motherfucking pit back. I just had a minute with the switch back. I hope you're not lip syncing to it because those aren't the worst. Um, you know, I, I would be shocked, especially if they did it without me knowing. I'd be like, oh my God. I mean, they would have to let you know, right? As long as they pay for the rights. I, I I would be honored if they if they use my song. You know, my song, my music has been used on a couple of things here and there. And it feels really nice. You know, my um I got one of my songs used on uh Survival of the Thickest, Word. which was really nice. That felt really amazing. Um and I was also on like a mcdonald's commercial or a kfc commercial in australia um work so people get people in australia can be like you're on a kfc commercial here i'm like yeah girl. Gang, gang. I, I had two places i had one on a show called hightown okay. hello oh hey i'm recording thank you how are people always okay. people, girl are you I'm in my I'm in, I'm in my family's house that's my uncle Steve. oh i'll say baba Bob, you you in the hotel room Bobby, just ass up and then nigga, nigga just walking in here all day long every five minutes you're like hello oh, later 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 um i've I'm had two my, uh, i've had two places I'm, I'm in my family's home but also i will say when i'm in hotels they're they are always knocking i feel like there is someone <laughs> always knocking on my door and it's just so annoying <laughs> i've had two places i had a place on a show called high town um, they use bitch on Beyonce, and I had a placement on um the shy. I think they use. Would you be there the way I'm there for you? That's so exciting. I know. Um. Okay. So so Dawn just went home. Um. Morphine beat her in the lip sync to body, and I want to say out loud. This maybe this is. I feel like I'm the only one with this take, and it might be unpopular. Dawn certainly lost that lip sync, but I didn't think Morphine's performance was that. I, I wasn't like, my God. Really? Morphine went crazy. I was like, she she certainly won. And that was not up for debate. But she was going up against Dawn. Like, I don't think Dawn stood a chance to begin with. Like, so you, you, you're saying whatever the song was, Morphine would have bodied her on it. No, on this specific song, Morphine would have mor- morphine bodied her. I'm talking about on this specific song. I think that Dawn's other lip syncs were better than this one. I think Dawn had other lip syncs? I mean, sorry, Morphine. I think every other performance Dawn has done on the show, including the verses and the dances and the challenges, have all been better than what she did on Body. Everything Morphine has done, like her first her first number out in the talent show, was better than what well, she you, did. You, you keep on saying Dawn and Morphine. You're saying Morphine. Morphine. What I'm saying is Morphine, to me, did not eat the way everyone kept. Everyone was like, Morphine went crazy. And I was like, she certainly beat Dawn. That's not up for debate. Uh-huh. Whether or not she beat Dawn is not up for debate. But I don't think it was just like crazy. Like, she went bananas. I think she's gone bananas in almost every other time. Like, when she went against Maya, that was that was great. What song she was went, that? Oh, it was, the, uh, d- um, Diana, not Diana Ross. Um, it doesn't matter. That song. Yes. So, yes. That that lip sync she went Donna off. Summer. Like people, I had to say that people are going crazier about her about her lip sync to Body than they are about her lip sync against Maya. And I thought her lip sync against Maya was way better. She did such a good job on that one. Interesting. I disagree. I thought she was really good. I I think particularly because clearly Morphine has, Morphine has performed this song before, and the way she made sure that we knew and we saw her lip sync every breath, word, comma, the intensity of that made this made this lip sync feel better to me because she just like she 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 did not miss anything. Like it was just really impressive. Like that combined with what she did dan all her dancing and doing the choreo and stuff. And that was all cool. So I think that's why it felt more impressive to me. Um oh shit I just closed my notes on accident. Um but Safira has just won uh four three challenges no, she she has four challenge wins. That's, oh yeah, she's right. Three in a row, four all together. Bitch, don't ever try to correct me again, bitch. Ever in your life, bitch. Safira has just won her fourth challenge, um, which is so. By the end of this episode, obviously, Plain has four. Safira has four. 
of the 13 challenges, they have won eight of them. That's wild. So 9, 10, 11, 12. There were only four challenges that the rest of the group has shared. Five. No. 9, uh, 10, 11, 12, 8, 13. 9, 10, 11, 12. 13. Is oh, 13. Five, which is more, which is certainly more. But, um, yeah, I was just like, they, they these two are, have really, you know, cleaned up. And, and it's not uncommon for uh, a, a, a someone to dominate a lot of the um, challenge wins, obviously, you know. Um, but for for so many of them to go to two is is kind of wild. Yeah. Um, I mean, on my, I mean, on my season we had uh, but you have like eight three, or three, nine three episodes. No, we had we had like nine episodes where you could win a challenge. I or maybe eight. I think it was eight. We had eight episodes where you could win a challenge, and I won. I won three. Kim won two, and then the other three were won by other people combined. Um, going to the top of this episode, it's nice to see Q not being. I, I, not being so upset. Like I think last week, I'm still a little gag that because I mean, a lot of us on Drag Race have had the experience of feeling like you're you should have won something that you didn't win. But I can't remember. Maybe I'm just misremembering the show because it's been so many seasons. I can't remember a past time where someone is so blatantly upset and go as goes as far as saying you don't deserve. So it's nice to see Q being in a better place this episode and not making Safira feel bad. I'm gonna assume you don't remember season uh, five at all because that was Roxy Andrews versus Jinx Monsoon the entire finale. My happiest moment was seeing you in the bottom because you don't deserve to be here because the rest of us are <laughs> directly you don't even deserve to be here. So I'm just gonna assume you just didn't even watch season five because that was kind of the whole plot. Right, right, right. There was that. And, and, well, and it's, also, it's, been, it's been a while. Also, Aja a having her higher rant against Valentina. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You look like a mom. They eat up everything she does on that runway. Uh, I think the jealousy of girls who win or even get good praises is, is pretty is a pretty common thing. On, on girls are getting Thorgy. <laughs> yeah, Thorgy. But Thorgy was but Thorgy was hating on the cover because to you she was like ah well I can't forget me like that and back and to us she was like Bob. Ugh. But in your defense, there have been. 16 seasons and and yeah seven all-stars so and bibbidi bop boop it's seven it's eight we don't talk about that one. Oh wait that's eight who won that one so neat no no jimbo 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 that's right jumbo you know that wasn't a good season i don't remember to be honest did we did we do did, did we review it we did <laughs> oh my god we're yeah, we're worth it <laughs> um so the next day we they come in and they start playing monopoly which doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything they're all marketing down the, yeah the rupaul monopoly game andy got a few for christmas I, I i gave it a, a, the secret santa did you take it no no okay but i would have assumed that they would have uh made a monopoly based challenge or something that would have been fun that would have been fun oh that would have been really fun um i'm not a big i have never been a big monopoly player i remember as a kid my, my parents got it for me for christmas and i was like that's fucking fucking wacka that's fucking shit i never wanted to be a monopoly girl it's too long monopoly is fun it is a long game it is a long game and it can get and because monopoly involves uh extreme capitalism basically is, is capitalism the game where you try to uh, make it impossible for other people to leave. You try to make life so expensive that other people literally just can't even live <laughs> in the same area that you live in. And then you buy up their neighborhoods, you buy up their resources, you buy up their companies, you buy up their mode of transportation. Oh my God. We would, was, Jacob, can you look it up? Was, was, was Monopoly made in America? I need to, I mean, it sounds like an American game. Can you please look that up? Of course, America would make this fucking game. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it if it was. So, uh, so, so, so they they play Monopoly, which doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything. But then these uh, pit crew members from the Vegas so live hot. show come in, and they find out that they are the yeah, makeovers. The US. Yes, Hasbro. It is made in the U.S. They are they are them they are their they are the makeover um, challenges. So they are going to be the ones they have to give a family resemblance to. Have you ever met any of these? I, I've met two two of these boys and uh, Mark, uh, Safira's partner, and I've met Nick. And Mark A is literally one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. He has a twin brother, Donald, that lives here in, in Los Angeles. And um, Nick is also very nice. He, he's he's danced on a few seasons of Drag Race I've been on. Like, he's been mm-hmm. a part of the thing. I may have met them, but I don't particularly remember meeting them, to be honest. Uh, because I've never really done the Vegas show. 
and I've gone backstage like twice, uh, but it's it's just usually heck like I'm usually like in and out. I remember meeting one guy who was like, "I'm a big fan of yours," but I can't remember which one he was. It was it was just so it was just so quick and so in and out. Yeah. But I've I, I've always had great interactions with them, and uh, the one I, want, I know is David. And I don't think David does it anymore, does? Yeah, David's it? girl. David's still there. David's the, David. David like like David Rock was still there, love. I think he's like the dance captain or something. I, yeah. Also, everyone's wanting the most muscular guy. I would not want yeah the big like they. I want the strongest, most muscular. Did y'all forget what the challenge is? They're blinded. Put, put, put your put your boner away. They're blinded and by think the penis. about the challenge for a second, ladies. They're blind, bitch. You have been star for attention for at this point what four and a half weeks. You're desperate. You're like, yeah, I want the big muscly one so I can watch him tuck. But I'm star for the crown too. Well, that's what I'm really hungry for. I want to eat them gems. I want to eat them rhinestones, honey. That's what I want to eat, honey. So this is the makeover challenge for the pick members of RuPaul's Drag Race Live. And um, when they do the partners, for most people, like, people get partnered with, because in the makeover challenges, what I find tough is paintings, because, again, I'm going to say this out loud. I am not a good painter. I am not good at putting other people in drag. I'm not good at, I can, I make myself beautiful, and I'm good at doing my makeup because I've done it. Well over, I want to say, at least 2,000 times. Easily 2,000 times. So I'm good at me. Doing someone else, I have to figure out, your, bitch, your colors. You really think it's been 2,000 times? Yes. I've been doing drag since 2012. They're 365 days a year. And I would get in drag at least half a year. Especially back in New York when I was working. Let me calculate this. This is, this is, this number. I'm interested. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if you're wrong bitch, or not. But what is, are you, are you, are, are, nigga, are you, are you going to war? How many years have you been doing drag? I've been doing drag for 12 years now. I mean, even if you did drag every single day, it'd be 4,000 times. Right. So that's, that's if you did it every single day for, thir- for, for 12 no, years. No, that's not true. Yeah. 12 times 365 is 4,380. That would be if you did drag every single day for 12 years. And then, so I've done at least, so let's say half the year. So I've done at least, at least 180 days a year for the past. So you think you do, you think you do drag three times a week? Back in New York, I was, yes, I was, I was doing drag six times a week. But how long was that? How many? How, that was how, three how years was I did that? that. So three times. Uh, it would be. Three times 365 divided by two is 547. Wait, what? Wait, why divided by two? Because I did 365. So three times 365 equals divided by two is, that is 547 times. Why are you dividing it by two? Because I'm doing it by, I'm doing it the whole year. And then you say you did it half of the day. So I divided it in half. I did half I don't know what day? 365 and a half is. Bitch, you did drag. You said if you did drag three. Okay, wait. Okay, so, so, stop talking for a second. I need. I just need to, to, think, to think about it without you saying anything for a second. Let me just think. About okay. It for a second because you drive me crazy. <laughs> and then y'all, Bob does the you. thing where I'm mean, like, he does it. Bitch, you. The bitch isn't helping. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Can I say it nicer, please? <laughs> yes. Okay. Go ahead. I'm listening. All right. So if you do drag every day for 365 days. And then that's I so I did three times three sixty five, and you said I did it at least half of those days. So I divided it in half. Mm-hmm. So are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> You're lying. Anyway, so we have five. We have five hundred and forty seven. Now, do you think you do drag three times a week now? <laughs> Average throughout the year, yes. How many times have you done it this week? Um, I just got. I was in drag twice this past week. This past week. Yeah, well, and the week before that, I was in it six times. How about the week before that? The week before... <laughs> Why are you trying to... See? I, was, I don't like, I I don't like when he gets cunty. Y'all, when he does something like, well, what about before that? <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> don't fucking do that at me, bitch. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this here. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get to the well, bottom of Well, even before that doesn't count, I was on vacation. I was in Belize. Okay. So, okay, 2,000 times. Anyway, so you, you, you've done your makeup 2,000 times. Okay, on, on, the, on the conservative side, I'm going to say 1,500 times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to get you to change your answer. I was just trying to crunch the numbers myself. How many, how many times do you think you've been in drag? I've been in drag for 15 years, and I've probably done my makeup maybe 2,500 times. So you think those five years, those those three years gave you 500 more times than me? So I did drag for seven years in New York City. 
and I was doing drag. Uh, I was doing eight shows a week. Now, granted, it was it was over the course of five days. Right, about to say. So, five, so uh, five times four equals times twelve equals uh, divided in half. 40, no, <laughs> uh, times uh, seven years in New York City. I'm already at one thousand six hundred and eighty already, and I haven't even gone on Drag Race yet. Honey, <laughs> put your fucking hands out. So, so, oh, so, 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 what I was saying was, like, the majority of the girls get partnered with someone with a similar complexion to them. Like, Jane is with Nick, who they both white. Safira is with Mark. I mean, Mark is a lighter, a lighter skinned black person, but you know. And then Morphine is with Miguel, who is they're, just, they're they're similar similar hues. So, I find painting someone else who's a similar color to me is easier. That's why I painted Patty so fucking white because he's fucking Patty is pale. So I, I I had never painted someone white before. So it just it was just it was hard. That was your first time ever painting someone white ever? Well, t- uh, no, no, I had painted t- uh, Tyler. The last not Tyler was it? No, who's my person in season ten? Ty was your first one. His name is Tyler. I mean, t- not Tyler. Uh, Tyler Oakley. Right, Tyler, Tyler Oakley. Yeah, Tyler, yeah. yeah. Tyler was the first was the first white person I ever painted. Oh. Before, dra- oh yeah, you, you but you would Bob would put like his like drag kids and stuff in drag. I ain't had no drag kids. I ain't paint nobody before that season. I, mean, I put people in drag, but not a lot. I would just like show them things. I w- I wasn't like any streets like paint with mommy time. I was really showing my drag kids more about like how to get gigs and how to work and how to make mixes and how to like have a name in nightlife and how to and steal kind of that way. How to how to scam a scam. Mm-hmm. Um. um so so all the girls are are paired up and they honestly all seem really happy with their choices. I don't know why Morphine is so happy to have this big muscle man. I honestly and it ended up being part of I think a part of her downfall um because she doesn't seem to know how to uh put drag on that kind of body. Um but as they're preparing uh Jane and uh her guys seem like a really good match. They seem to have a lot in common. They mm-hmm. seem to be getting along really well. Uh, Morphine, Morphine and Miguel also seem to be a good pair. Uh, based on their personalities, they seem to get along very well too. And then Nymphia got paired with a straight guy, and honestly, I would have hated that. That normally works out on Drackers. So think about like Crack, Miss Cracker, and Cookie. Like that, like the straight guys normally. Who was Cookie? Miss uh, was Miss Cracker's makeover on season ten. He was the influencer, short Latinx guy. And uh, Wintergreen also. Wintergreen. But they were all straight, though. Mm-hmm. With Wintergreen, all the crew were straight. No, not Rizzo. But most of them were straight. Like, it was it was the crew. It wasn't like... Oh, oh, so, oh so you think that so you think that queer people can't work behind the camera? We can't, I think they can, but camera? I think those guys were mostly straight, though. I think that uh, camera crews are overwhelmingly straight, man. And that's just statistical. Uh, what? what did, you, did, did you take a statistics course? How the hell you know? What was, well, it's based on all the cameras, all the all the sets I've been on. Most of the guys who are at the camera, most of the crew is always straight men or lesbians. Very there there aren't zero gay guys, but there's very few. Well, um, yes. Yeah, so Tanifia has a married straight guy. What I but uh, but in Drag Race though, but here though, Bob, in the context of Drag Race, that times that sometimes that works better because it's more of a transformation. Like with Cookie and Cracker, RuPaul was obsessed with how like femi and like this like straight dude, how like feminine and how girly he was. RuPaul loved that. I think that's what pushed Cracker ahead because yes, it was a good makeover, but he was also he got he got hyper femme when he transformed, which I think RuPaul likes. And then Morphine wow. just spending the entire time admiring how hot her partner is. Like she can't oh, even. Yeah, Cookie got turned. I forgot how much Cracker ate this. She did. Down. Did, Cracker, did Cracker win this challenge? I think so. Because if not, she should have. Because this is a. I think great. she won. Yeah, yeah I think I think, I think Cracker won. Great. And she really ate that. G- g- bitch, crack, uh, g- Crackers, Crackers win. Crackers, uh, fucking triumph was my downfall. Okay. Um. <laughs> But you, but you came back and had a great run on uh, All Stars. You I, both had a great run. You actually both had great runs on All Stars when you came back, both of you. Yeah. And but to you, and PJ is concerned about how masculine how, and beefy her guy is. Like, and he's not even the masculine and beefy, beefiest of them all. But PJ is concerned about that. And to your point, like you said earlier, rightfully so. Like you're trying to feminize this person when you got somebody that got traps up to here. Their lats are fucking wider than, than your back. Like, it's hard to make that look, to soften that up, girl. Well, I, I think the beefiest guy was with Q, and Q did not seem concerned at all. And also, with good reason, she she masked his big 
muscly body so well. I forgot how muscly he was until he took off his coat in Untucked. I was like, yeah. oh, I forgot this guy was like a full-on wrestler. Yeah. But also, apparently, Q and Safira's drag daughters are frenemies. Yeah. They are like frenemies who like know each other and like are very competitive, which I love the like the shade that all that that especially Q, I think Q's daughter is the one really throwing a lot of shade in the, in the in the workroom. I think it's really funny. And morphine, morphine. I forgot what the joke was. She said something about the top, and he's like, "Oh, you mean a place you've never been? Somewhere you've never been?" I was like screaming. Um, <laughs> I'm also noticed. That, first of all, RuPaul will change your drag name. <laughs> RuPaul will advocate for you to change your drag name if it's the last thing she does. Uh, I mean, I, I you know, I, I didn't feel particularly strong about Shakira or Sequoia or no, what was it, the original name? Oh, I don't remember. Oh, it was um Chris uh, um um Hyacinth. Hyacinth, and you can call her Cynthia. I don't like that. Like that that is that is Bob. To your point, that's like a Maya Iman LePage. No one knows how to fucking. I don't know how to spell Hyacinth. I I don't either. And the thing about Maya's name is the, the reason why I say Maya's name is hard to search. I, whenever I look for Maya, I can't find her on the internet because I can't spell her name because you think how you've always been taught to spell yeah. Maya. M-A-Y-A. Yeah. And you have to you have to really retrain your mind to, you know, and then also names like Dawn. Like, baby, you're never going to be, I mean, you might be the most searched Dawn, but there's so much, there's soap. You're not going to outdo the soap. <laughs> you might. You might. You might. You might, but it's going to be a, a uphill battle trying to outdo the soap, <laughs> mama. So maybe, maybe when you're thinking of your, Q. Q? How do you you just search Q drag? I don't even know. I guess. Let me try to search. Let me see if I type in. Q. I think we did this before, but I haven't. We haven't done it since the season started. I'm gonna try type Q in my search. What comes? I type up. in Q drag, and it does show her Instagram. Oh no! I mean, when I type Q, she's the fourth one down. First is Aja. Why does Aja come first when I type Q? Weird. When I type Q into Google, I'm in Q Google. Google. Q Google. First thing I get is Q. First thing I get is Q Food Mart here in Atlanta, Georgia. And then Q Time Restaurant. And then there's a musician named Q. And then there's Live Q or you know, Q is way at the bottom. There's an app called Q. There's an app called Q Dance. <laughs> Wait, all you there's just okay, shop. Bob, you can't just type Q. You have to put more than that. Just Q. Well, I what you, you can type it. If I type in Monet, you pop up. Well, if I type in Monet, you may not be, I don't know if you're the well, what my would come my, up first and then my search engine will probably be biased. Okay, Claude Monet is the first Monet that shows up. But as I keep scrolling, there's more Claude Monet. <laughs> but as I keep scrolling, <laughs> You're such a bitch. there's more Claude You're Monet. You're such a fucking bitch. And that's what's important. <laughs> What's well, having Q, and the fourth, the fifth after Q is Bob. I don't know why. Why does Bob come with a type in Q? Oh, oh, drag queen, maybe? Now, when yeah, I put up Monet with an uh, accent, yeah. when I put Monet with an accent, you are the first image. Oh, look at when me. I, put the accent over there. I still have that wig. I should wear that wig. That wig is right there. Now, the rest of them are all Victoria Monet, but you are the very first one when I type in <laughs> Monet with an accent. It's true. It's true. Nigga, um, when I type in Bob, okay, let me type in Bob. Let me see what happens when I type in Bob. I'm typing in Bob. Gag. You're about to gag. Okay, no. The first thing that comes in is What's your name? B.O.B. Instead of calling you Bob? Stop playing, nigga. You know that I'm known for the Bob. And then do you know who comes in my images? Bob the Builder. But try, but try Bob the. <laughs> <laughs> but also, my name's not just Bob. Her name is Q. <laughs> we, okay, we, 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 we've had this conversation before. There's no, there's no reason to rehash it. Yeah. For me, this year has really been about pushing myself to try new things. From the world tour with Madonna to Dave being my one-woman show, it's been challenging. But those challenges are always the most rewarding when you take on a new challenge pair eyewear helps you see what's possible with one pair you get infinite possibilities starting at just 60 dollars, including your prescription and with their sun top collection you can protect your eyes in style without paying extra for prescription sunglasses pair is budget friendly without compromising on style or quality it's an affordable and easy way to change up your look with top frames starting at 25 dollars. what about the bottoms i love the versatility my frames bring to every situation and outfit just for me Pair provides a curated selection of base frames for men, women, and kids starting at $60, including wide frames to fit every face. 
One pair, infinite possibilities. Go to PairEyewear.com and use code SIBLING15 for 15% off your first pair. And support the show by mentioning that Sibling Rivalry sent you in your post-checkout survey. That's P-A-I-R-Eyewear.com, code SIBLING15. Have y'all ever tried to break a bad habit and felt like you're just climbing Mount Everest in flip-flops on? You know, I've been there. I've tried to break a few habits. Here's a breath of fresh air, y'all. Fume. It's not about giving up. It's about switching it up. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. I love how my fume looks and feels in my hand. It is lightweighted, perfectly balanced, and extremely fun to fidget with. And I love the beautiful real wood finish and the shape of it. The flavors are intense, and it always hits the right spot for me. Start the year off right with a good habit by going to tryfume.com slash rivalry and getting the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use our code rivalry to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Start the good habit at Trifume.com slash rivalry to save 10% off the journey pack today. Hey, y'all. It's your favorite siblings, Bob and Monet. And we have some upcoming dates that we would love to see y'all at. Please do not forget to come see us on May 5th at the Netflix Is a Joke Comedy Festival in Los Angeles, California. And then we're doing Sibling Rivalry Live in San Diego on June 7th. A summer of siblings. Sounds fabulous to me. Okay, okay, y'all, this is Monet Exchange. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. My U.S. tour of my hit Edinburgh Fringe Festival show, Life Be Life, and it's coming across America, baby. We're coming to Seattle, Portland, Denver, Salt Lake City, Tucson, Asheville, Atlanta, Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and San Francisco, starting April 30th all the way through May 19th. Y'all, I am so beyond proud of this show. It's so dope. It's so fierce. And I want you guys to all experience it. So please go to MonetExchangeLive.com and get tickets to see my hit one-woman show, Life Be Life In, about, you know, darkly humorous, poignant, coming-of-age, singing, a one-woman show. You don't want to miss it. I'll see y'all there. So, also, I got to say, Lazy Susan is a great drag name. I think it's very that, good, too. Plain Jane and Lazy Susan. That is very, that, that, that is, that is good. Was hilarious. I don't know if it was, if I would have laughed as hard as RuPaul did, but I did think it was a very, very good name, and it was very funny. I think it was, it was I, th- I think that's, that's a good one. Um, after they did the walkthroughs, or, or wait, do you still have another, another walkthrough thing? No, no. Um, Q's partner, Sebastian, he walks better in heels than Q. Oh, then half the girls in the competition. Yeah, he's really good at heels. Like you could tell, he he be up in uh, Roxy Andrews and a and a and a and a Plastiques Louboutins going to ham, girl. Yeah, that's that's Alfredo. Yes, it's, 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 it's Alfredo, Alfredo. But Alfredo's a little. Uh, Alfredo's, Alfredo's not great in heels. Alfredo's but Alfredo, in heels, girl. But Alfredo is my drag daughter, and before she did drag, Alfredo used to uh, just put on all of our dresses. Alfredo used to love because Alfredo's like roughly me and Monet size. Yeah, roughly closer to my size than Monet size. Yeah. But um, but we just come to our homes, put on our dresses, our costumes, and just take pictures. Um, and now she's making outfits better than I could ever make, quite frankly. <laughs> really? You think Alfredo, so? was, Alfredo was very good, much better than I am. It's funny because I taught Alfredo how to sew, but then Alfredo went and learned how to sew for real. Yeah. And it's just like light years. It's so it's so good. Um, Alfredo posted something so cute the other day. His, free the drag queen, y'all. Free the drag queen on Instagram. And then him and Joel went to a thing, and in the caption it said, with my forever plus one. That's so cute. I love that. They're so cute. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Sephira, <laughs> um, child, anyway, so, <laughs> so, so Sephira ends up, um, when they go to dance, um, when, when they go to like do the little dance together, uh, Safira's like, I can't dance in this big geo dress. <laughs> when they stop making fun of even, Safira's like, I can't dance in this big geo dress, so I'm gonna change. Did you clock the outfit she's wearing? No, that's Maya Iman's entrance outfit. Maya Iman's entrance outfit, 
The outfit that Safira went down the runway in is Maya's entrance outfit. Oh, shit. And then her partner was wearing PJs. Plain jeans. But I'm also wondering, is Plain Jane secretly the Miss Congeniality? Because she has lent out a, a lot, lot of stuff. Of drags. Yeah. And is she lending it out because she's not intimidated by these girls? But also, when she lends stuff out, it doesn't always do them good. Because she gave... A, plasma uh, she that gave, damn uh, wig. Plasma the wig that's in her home. She she lent uh, uh, Safira the wig, that, the outfit that got her put in the bottom too. <laughs> Oh my God, that's Maya's entrance look. The orange thing. With the big feathers. Ye- and to be honest, I didn't care for it much when Maya wore it, and I don't really care for it much when Safira had it on either. I wonder we'll what the fear of, So I guess the outfit she bought for the makeover was just too cumbersome, but why would you... When I did the makeover, I bought two outfits just in case. I bought a big crazy one, and I bought something a little more simple. Like, why? I guess she only came with one option. When I mean, when I was on Drag Race, we had to make them there. Like part of it was you have to sew these outfits. You can't bring them from mm. home. Uh, which honestly, I think we should get back to. Quite frankly, I I, I agree. I, I I I'm not I'm, I'm not opposed to that. But then you know me. I, then there's another design challenge. I'm not a strong design. I'm not a strong a fucking strong strong seamstress. What they need to do is like fucking Project Runway. Okay, we sketch out the thing we want to do. We cut out the patterns, and we have stitchers coming overnight and fucking make our outfits. I think that's what should be done. I feel that that like that's fair. I disagree. I don't think that's interesting, and I think that you that people get to shine when they when they are when they can sew. So if everyone has the same level of sewing skill because we're all using the same people, I don't think that is as interesting as as. And also, that's not what Project Runway does. That's what the cut or making the cut did. Project Runway they sew their own outfits. No, I've heard different things. I've, well, I I heard after like after Heidi Klum was on, they started having stitchers. Like from no, Hi- no, Heidi Klum and Tim Gunn started a new show called Making the Cut on Amazon. And on that show, because Heidi Klum and Tim Gunn left Project Runaway. So when Heidi Klum and Tim Gunn went to their new show called Making the Cut for Amazon, that is when they start when they when they stopped sewing their own outfit. That's what I'm hearing. Project on Runway, on Project they, Runway, when they left, they started doing stitchers on Project Runway. Oh. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know anyone from uh from post uh from post Heidi Klum, but I but I know the the the, the folks who were there before were like, no, we made our outfits. We were sewing but i think that they should i think we should be sewing it's it's, it's a design and construction count it's, it's a design and a construction challenge okay i think for all-star seasons they should have that for the regular season no i, I disagree again for because seasons this is that i'm on they should have that okay are you going back no but i'm saying I, if, if i that's had that you said last time that's not true i did not say that to all-stars four no you said after all-stars four no after all i did not say i'm never going back after when i did all-stars four so you so you so you say right now on the podcast you are never going back to Drag Race ever. The only way I'm going back to Drag Race is if the the competition is to host the show. Huh? Y'all heard that? <laughs> Why are you? Timestamp. <laughs> Timestamp, baby. Oh, uh, but baby. Nymphia is explaining her tucking. Okay. We said this before. I am not a tape girly. Okay. The one time I tried to tape, the first time I tried to tape, I did it on national television. And I still have not watched the episode because it's fucking disgusting. I can never watch it. I'm so embarrassed with myself. And I just I, so I'm not a tape girly. But the way that the, but there are so many methodologies to methodologies to taping. Nymphia's way is I think what I have had in my mind of what I think what I tried to do, which is you push your balls into like the little sacks and then you pull everything back. Fucking morphine is making a a tape cock sock. She like you wrap the tape around the penis a couple times, because I guess that makes it grippier. And then then you pull everything. But I was like, I never heard the wrapping it around the dick multiple times. I have never heard that one. I mean, I've heard people wrap their genitals in paper towels and then from the so to to protect it from the tape. You wrap it in paper towels and then you tape it back because you're trying to protect your genitals from the tape. But when it rip, but then then it's too slidey, then it will slip off. No, because it's still taped to your pelvis and it's still taped to your ass crack. It's just not taped on top of your genitals. And then so people who tape, these, these people must shave, right? Like, how do you tape if you have a hairy bush? I mean, I imagine you should. I've only taped like a few times in my life, and it really is not the life for me. It's 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 so messy. It's so cumbersome. It is it's so much upkeep. It is so much work. Um, and I also I'm not going legless. The only reason you really need to be in this street 
taping is if you're planning on showing your actual skin yeah. up to you, like above your 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 uh, your your hip bone. Yeah. In my honest opinion, um, otherwise, why are you in these streets taping for a cat suit when you can literally just put on a gaff and get the exact same effect? Yeah, I would agree. I think, but sometimes though, I've I've worn gaffs and I and there'd be a little spillage, girl. Like I did Fashion Week this year. And I thought I was living my best. Get my I always wear a gaff or a tuck and panty. And bitch, someone took a picture of me. There is a get, oh my god, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, someone's gonna search for it. It's gonna be out there. There's a Getty image of me posing. What I tell you, ball out. And it's always my left testicle. My left testicle is always roaming around. My left, and I think I am serving. I'm in this beautiful. I'm not gonna say the designer because I'm gonna narrow it down. When this beautiful thing I'm posing, and I saw the Getty images, my left ball is just. Out the side of my fucking thigh, between my thigh and my mind, it is disgusting. I mean, I've seen some spillage with taping too. Like that, I don't think tape is not some guarantee that you won't have spillage at, for any reason. Yeah, you know what I mean. But um, but you know what I do is uh, I don't tuck anymore. Like I don't wear things that require me to tuck anymore. I'm not. I'm not in these streets. I'm no longer in these leotard streets. I'm no longer in these fucking um tight cat suit streets my a my drag has aged with me and honestly we're both quite happy where we are so you don't think you're ever gonna wear that stuff ever again maybe one day but i also feel like even with a leotard unless between the padding um the way that i tuck now with like a tight pair of underwear um you still you don't need all that extra i don't need it anyway got it not not eyes at the rooster. Um, also, we were just, uh, 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 I, I wrote that down too. I guess in my, in order about Safira's crapping her look and mixing, but I, I'm gagged that that's Maya's look. I guess what she, when Maya left, she asked Maya to. I think Safira was anticipating the makeover challenge. She was like, "Girl, let me let me hold that just in case," because Maya left like three episodes ago. Yeah, I mean, so during when Jane's daughter was talking about staying in the closet forever, I was like, "Girl, I feel like a lot of us have been there." Where you closet and you're like, I'm just gonna be in the closet for the rest of my life and I'll just die. That's my that's that's the current plan of action. What, what, what y'all what y'all gonna do? What, what y'all plan? You know what I mean? You can't even check in with people because you're the only one. Yeah, yeah. You know? And um, but also, I th- he also speaks to a lot to like you being so scared because when you're in the closet, it feels so lonely. You feel like no one else understands you. Think and and so for some people, it is like no one does understand. For some people, your family does not accept you. But he's kind of like me, right? He was so afraid to tell his family, but when he did, you realize his family was like, "Oh, hey, girl," as opposed to shunning you and exiling you and ostracizing you. Um, but that's so hard to know until you fucking do it. Well, you're projecting your own fears onto other people yeah. as opposed to letting them tell you what's up. Mm-hmm. So let's go into the looks. I want to say the judges panel looks amazing wait, wait, every wait, wait, wait. single let me, let me, let me, one of them yeah. every look i love this country girl i love t.s madison i love rupaul i love michelle's looks they all genuinely look amazing well <laughs> i love maddie's being so so coy with her pose kelsey ballerini she's a she's a country singer yes got it um so let's go on to Q. You know, the internet seemed really kind of upset about these clown faces. I'm like, did y'all forget that, like, not every drag queen is, like, in these streets trying to, like, be like, I'm the cuntiest woman in the world. Like, there's lots of club kids. I feel like there's been kind of an interesting shift on, like, alternative drag lately that I don't personally vibe with. That being said, I like these looks. I think they look really good. This kind of reminds me of um, Crystal Method when they did the Bert- when she did the Bert and Ernie look with her partner. Um, I think they both look good. I think that she did a really good job at masking his body. I mean, that neck, he still has a neck like a pit bull. I mean, he, his neck is the same size as his head. So that she can't mask. But at least she got someone who could really walk in heels, which I, you know, most certainly um, appreciate it. I think that this looks like a, it looks like a, maybe some pop art inspired moment, but I really enjoy this. I what definitely like hers. Her look on, what is this? Can you translate that? I can't, I don't, I don't even know what this says. Wait, what do you, what is it? Oh, it's in Spanish. I can't even read it. The queen um, who's calling her out for copying her makeup look. Oh shit! Okay, so the queen is Fugacio Crujiente, and they said, "En plan que a mí esto no me molesta ni mucho menos y puede haber sido coincidencia, pero no estoy loca, no? Like I'm, I'm not crazy. Like, 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 oh, is this a coincidence or am I crazy? 
Let me, let me... Uh, she's from Gregory, Spain, I believe. Here we go. Listen, I didn't invent makeup, but isn't Q's makeover literally my face? I'm not bothered in the slightest, and it could have been a coincidence, but I'm not crazy, right? I was right about that. Ha 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 is LOL. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. it's the same makeup. I feel like I've seen people do this before, but I also, maybe they all got their makeup from Hugasia, so I don't know. Jacob, maybe... can you please screenshot this to make sure Jay put this, puts this in? Maybe who got who who got who got CEO. Well, they get Jacob's screen on here actually. Um, they have J- the, the Jacob's screen, but they could be, but, but not yeah. Um, but I've seen people do that makeup before, so I don't I don't know how unique that is to that queen. But may, but but there is a chance that Q saw her on Drag Race and was like, oh, she was on Drag Race, Race? Spain, Drag Race Spain. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like Q's outfit more. I like the coat and because I think it's a mouth and like the thing is supposed to be a tongue. I like Q's way more. I mean, I get why she wear the uh, why the makeovers wearing the other thing because you know that can fit on multiple body types and it and it be and it look great. So and you know it's 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 less of a gamble. But I I just like Q's look more than um this other one. Let's go on to Morphine and Latina Love Dion. You know, I, I agree with the critiques. These what? these dresses are they're plain. These are plain dresses. And especially for drag and for drag race. And um I do think that Latina I mean, there's nothing wrong with a big buff lady. Um if that's what you're going for. It didn't seem like that's what they were going for. It seemed like it's what they ended up with to me. Interesting. I disagree. I think how how you can look at this and say it's plain and not call plain Jane who wins the challenge. The same like they're both wearing plain Jane and Morphine's looks are to me on the same level. And just because this one is a little more buff, I don't think that takes away the family resemblance. In the face, they look exactly alike. Morphine and her makeover in the face look alike. Yes, this person is a tall buffer dude, but she padded the body right. Their proportions are similar. I didn't understand. I think that yes, this is a simple dress, but that's the challenge is not who can, who has the most extravagant look. Look, it's who can pull off a family resemblance by this random person that you don't know. And I think Morphine did a great fucking job. Well, I certainly have not compared this look to Plain Jane's. <laughs> so um, you're like, how could you call? Well, Plain not Jane? you. I'm talking about. I'm talking about the judges. Oh, yeah. But you know, I feel like um, like what it is about this dress is this dress does not excite me in any way shape form or fashion particularly latino's dress if i saw her in this dress in the club i would not i literally wouldn't care i wouldn't i wouldn't even think twice i wouldn't think it was nice i wouldn't think it was bad i would not care that this dress even existed in the same room as me it would get no attention from me and i do think her hair could have been a little bit bigger especially because she is so much larger and it feels like morphine has the bigger hair even though latina is the larger person and has traps that could fucking she could crush a can between her ear and her shoulders by just shrugging. You know what I mean? Um, and also look how tiny her necklace is in that big pit bull neck. She has this tiny the necklace looks so minuscule, and there's still so much decolletage going all the way down to the t- the, the 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 sweetheart shape of the uh of the garment. Um, but I do agree the makeup looks really, really good. The makeup looks fantastic, even. And I also am a I'm a little bit annoyed by the um the nude illusion on both of them looks pretty bad. Especially really? because because Latinas is interrupted by the tattoo. So it's just like all of a sudden your tattoo just stops right at your shoulder, which is something that there's no way that Morphine could have possibly known she would end up with someone with with arm tattoos. There's no way she could have even known what skin color the person would have been, quite frankly. Interesting. All right, do you have Should a, we go let's, on? Let's go on to Nymphia Wynn. Nymphia and um, her partner. Um, I think that these are great. I think, so Nymphia looks like she's doing some type of um, big bird illusion with like the orange legs and the yellow feathers. And then I was like, is her partner supposed to be some other Sesame Street character that I'm not getting? But no, I, I don't think she is big bird. I think she just is a bird and happens to have the big bird legs because her can, her her beak looked like a uh, look almost like a toucan. She has a beak. Sort of what a beak? Long, they were holding beaks in their hands. They both had beaks on sticks. Did you watch the episode? I don't remember that. What was, did, I, did I black out? They, they kept they kept holding the beaks up over and over again. They had these beaks. They were on sticks. Girl, I missed that. Oh well, they did. Um, um, but I think that her make I think that her makeover looks good. I think. Um, <clears throat> The proportions of Nymphia's looks better in this dress to me. 
and I didn't love the purple one, but I do think that it was a successful makeover. I think that the makeup, the makeup is not great. That eye looks a little crazy. The makeup is not fabulous, but I think it's fine enough to 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 be safe and to be not in the bottom. Uh, this is probably my favorite look of the evening. What? If I'm being honest, I really like this look. I think it looks great. I think that they're Family resemblance is good without being like literally. We're doing the same thing. I think wearing the same outfit is a is a is a kind of a cop out as opposed to having outfits that are in the same vein. That that is more interesting to me. And these are in the same vein. They, they they're from the same collection. It, it looks like two drag queens from the same family went out together on a theme, as opposed to we're literally trying to be twins this is probably my favorite look of the evening to be honest but if i'm being 100 honest none of these looks are killer none of these looks are going to go down in history so when i say my favorite look i'm not giving it that much oomph if i'm being fully honest with you i think nymphy looks really good compared to a makeover like and like to your point like he's wearing a tiny. he had these big ass fucking fucking pecs and these big ass shoulders and arms and this just is half the size of Morphine's guy's necklace. He's literally wearing a choker, and he looked like he's getting choked out. But so much of his decolletage is covered because the feathers come up pretty high. You know what I mean? Um, I just, I just, I just, I just like this one. Um, also, the judges finally said something about her wearing yellow. Like after all these, and by the way, the fans are always trying to cook us. Like, guys, all we're saying is that. Nymphia is wedging bananas into not just guys, it's not just the runway. Y'all are like, but she only wore it on the runway twice. It's not, she's wedging it into every challenge, even if it cost her the challenge. She did uh Jane Goodall just so she could talk about bananas. <laughs> she's writing it into every verse. So, guys, don't act like don't try to gaslight us, act like we're crazy for noticing that she's wedging bananas into everything. Every single challenge, every aspect, every outfit, even when she's just rehearsing, even when she's just talking to the camera, it's bananas, 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 bananas. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but but don't act like we're crazy for pointing it out. Because I feel like a couple of seasons ago, when Monet mentioned sponges three times, or Monique wore uh, a cow print halfway through the season, and then y'all are like, we're sick of the brown cow. <laughs> And I'm just saying there, that Mon- Monet and Monique have something in common that I feel gains you a lot of criticism in the world of drag. And when someone levies that same criticism against someone who doesn't have that same thing that Monet and Monique have in common, y'all be getting real itchy about it. So just clock that, T. I can't believe you're sticking up for me, Vaughn. This is so Bitch, weird. shut the hell up. Let's go to, thank go you. to the next so, so, can I Can I acknowledge you? And can I say thank you to my friends sticking up for me? That's very sweet. You see this? I was sticking up for more. I was thinking up for Monique. I bet. Um, let's go on to Sephira Cristal, which girl. S- disaster. Di- girl, a dumpster fire. This was absolutely horrible. The styling of this is crazy. Sephir- this, uh, this is, first of all, Sephira and these shoes. God bless her. These shoes, Sephira and these shoes have got to get it together. I cannot. Well, this shoe and this dress combination makes her look like taller than Tiara's. <laughs> The hair, the hair, which I love the hair by itself. I kind of want that hair. I want that wig. The color is gorgeous. From wearing. the neck up, she looks perfect, stunning. Yeah, but for the for every, but from the neck down, which was the challenge, it's not giving. And yeah. this is, and also I don't know why she chose that blue. What? Why she chose the blue? Oh, a petticoat. Petticoat. Yeah. I guess There's she didn't so have much. any color. She didn't have anything else. That was the only. That was her only option. That, that had to have been it. Also, the gloves are not great, and they both look jacked. They both look like they're the pit crew dancers. I don't know who's the pit crew and who's the drag queen. <laughs> um, this was bad. And, bad. You know, I don't think that the drag daughter looks bad, but those shoes don't match at all. Like a silver shoe with an orange dress, and then you're in a black shoe with an orange dress. The hair looks cute. They both have cute hair. And I think she did pretty decent on, on, on his face, but... It's a no for me, dog. Yeah. His body looks good, though. Mark's body looks really good. But, yeah, this is crazy. I don't know why she was – she really, and she was really going on about these gloves. She's like, I need these gloves. These gloves are going to really sell the, sell the fan. The gloves did – Sephira, those little, those little fucking gloves look crazy. These little gloves that stop here look – you're not a serial killer. What are you doing? 
Well, she looks like a, a an usher, a, a deacon, a, a usher at the church. <laughs> this was, or a praise dancer. Y'all have praise dancing at your church? Of course, girl. Praise is what I do. <laughs> she, she looks like a praise <laughs> dancer. <laughs> One of these girls. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's go on to the winner of this week's challenge, playing Jane. Um, first of all, Lazy Susan looks like Elliot with two T's. Did anyone else clock that? No, not Elliot with two T's, girl. That's what I was seeing. Um, I just don't like that these are literally the same outfit. I hate that. I I agree. Hate it. It's so lazy. I agree. And it was too simple. I feel like this is like at least more feet were different colors and there was some variation. This was the exact same outfit from head to toe. I mean, the, the, yes, the color of the hair was different. Well, not head to toe. I mean, that's not the color of the hair was different. But Bob, there's nothing else. And the else. shoes were also. And the shoes were also. Well, different. that's because this. But bitch, yes, but, yeah. But yes, the outfits are the same. Yes. Like I am gagged that she was. Th that's the thing. Like praising plain Jane so much, and coming from morphine to me, that's crazy. That's crazy in this in this in this in this reality. Yeah, I think this. I think these are really plain because you're judging for two things. First thing you're judging for is family resemblance, and after that, once you get the family resemblance down, you got to find find out is it a nice outfit. So I will say this: yes, there is family resemblance. This is not a nice outfit, and I do like the wigs. The wigs are nice. The wigs are cool. I actually, I actually really like these wigs. Um, even. Even out of a context of this seeing two of them, which seeing two of them really highlights how unattractive this garment is. Something about seeing two of them side by side, you're like, wow, this is a really Agreed. hideous piece. But even if it was just one, like these leg garters are kind of in a weird spot where they go up. Or maybe if they, maybe if instead of stopping just like that, they went up to a point and they attached to the leotard, that could maybe help. Um, I just don't. She looks like a like a like a superhero, but in a bad way. Yeah, I, I do not like these outfits. I don't like these outfits either. Like, I think that if I had to choose a top two, it would, it would a top a win. It would have been Q for me. Like Q's was creative. They were different. They were this. this she she made her guy look. Although her guy, because his neck is so big, he looks. It looks like a drag queen. It look. It, look, it looks like an evil super villain drag queen and her and her fucking henchman. He doesn't look. I mean, like think of a woman. Okay, Q versus Nymphia. My top two are Q and Nymphia, and I'm going to give it to Nymphia. But honestly, if Q would have won, I would have been like, yeah, that makes If Q or Nymphia would have won, I would have been like, yeah, of course. That makes sense to me. Either one of them could have won, and I would have been like, that makes sense. I think they got the bottom two wrong. Okay, the, I think that Plain Jane and uh, Morphine could have easily been swapped out for one another. But I do think that... But maybe just because, because Jane did have the most slight dancer of of the of the four of the five she so had the most slight her, dancer what do you mean slight he's like the 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 most dainty of the dancers oh i never heard that and i do slight slight yeah um and i do think that morphine had like the second most buff dancer um so i i can't tell but that's not the point the point is women come in all shapes and sizes obviously but um what i'm trying to get at is I could have swapped morphine or plain Jane out for the bottom, and it would have easily made sense to me. Easily, yeah. But then the, I don't, I don't, the show could not put morphine. I mean, plain Jane versus because I would have honestly, I don't know. You're right. Plain Jane and morphine could have been swapped out. Sephira is absolutely was the worst one there, and the next would have been either plain Jane or morphine to me. But plain Jane winning is crazy. Like that's crazy, and I'm I, I it, it it really upsets me. The plain Jane should not have won. I think plain Jane getting sent home by. Safira would have been a would have been fierce TV because it's like the hero and the anti hero going head to head. Would have been fierce, you know. Yeah, I'm 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 geeked. Um, but that being said, the winner of this challenge is Plain Jane. It brings her to yeah. four wins, and it leaves um Safira. Oh, T. S. Madison tweeted something. I wanted to read it. Apparently, um, the the Dragons fans are coming at her. About what? I don't know. I saw it, and I um. She also shares her tweets on. Um, it's such. It's, it, she shares her tweets on Instagram as screen grabs too, so it might be there. Let me look. I'm in Atlanta. You want me to drive over to her house? Oh my God, I love Maddie so much. I don't see it. I think she may have deleted it. I I definitely read it. Oh, uh, last thing I see she tweeted on Instagram was about Cowboy Carter. Well, while you're looking for that, I want to talk about something I saw that was really gaggy. 
Uh, so during the judging, Safira, I feel like Safira's dragged her through under the bus. She said, I know it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be fun. I was like, damn, that is a read. And then Safira said something really straight. I don't know if this is a saying that I've never heard. It is what it is. Dana Ross with Dorothy and the Wiz. I've never heard that. I don't know what the fuck that means. Did you hear her say that? I did hear her, but I didn't. I, I was like, this, this one, I have, she, she from Texas. I've never heard this anyone one country say shit. this in my life. But she, she goes, it is what it is. Dana Ross was Dorothy and the Wiz. Is that because Dana Ross was too old to play that role and Dorothy's supposed to be 16 and Dana Ross is like in her 40s? Is that what it is? Maybe. It's, that sounds like some country. That's that's what sure y'all be seeing in the country. Okay, well, Safira's not from the country. She is. She's from uh, Texas. Texas is not. Texas is not the South. Oh, she said. Okay, I asked people from Texas this, and they said Bob does not does not know. Who Only about. people from Texas say Texas is the South. Everyone from the South, everyone from the South who's not from Texas, will tell you that Texas is not the South. And I'm telling you, anyone from Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Arkansas, Kentucky, anyone from one of those places will tell you Texas is not the South. Texas is Texas. People from Texas think they're in the South. Let's say they don't know any better because they're from Texas. Well, y'all all hashed out. This is what Maddie said. Listen, Drag Race family. You, you <laughs> Listen, Drag Race family. You may not have liked my critique last night, and it's okay. I get to see girls throughout the season, and not every challenge. I truly enjoy watching the girls become stars and launching themselves into a life of superstardom. Next paragraph. But you motherfucking stands that think you can aggressively handle me? Better do some extensive research. I will fuck you up on any given day and whoop your ass live. Play with your drag, not me. I'm not RuPaul. In her, in, I'm her hood daughter. Everybody say love. <laughs> Ross Matthews could never. <laughs> I, I don't want Michelle happen. Visage I don't might, happened. though. I don't know what, like, what, Ross Matthews could never, but Michelle Visage might. <laughs> yeah, she might. Uh, but, but what could have happened? Like, what, I, I, I don't recall her saying anything, a critique that felt like, I, it, I don't know where that, where that came well, from. I feel like you and I say stuff that's not that inflammatory, too, but then people who are big fans of those people, like, we were just like, wow, N Nymphia wears yellow a lot. <laughs> fuck you, bitch, you fucking ugly, fat, black bitch. Fuck you. <laughs> Oh bitch, fuck you, fucking bitch. I got um that's where yellow a lot. I got a I got your stupid monkey nigga um a DM the other day and I was like, you know what? It's been a few weeks. <laughs> Wait, what? What I seen you? Not you. Uh uh uh, uh, sh uh oh. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. was I on ambient? What the what the uh, fuck is this? It looks like most of the response uh Maddie got was from her uh critique for Nymphia about constantly wearing yellow. And, and all the band are like she doesn't look, wear yellow. Look how I called it. <laughs> look how I called it. Y'all, listen, Nymphia fans, y'all are being weird. I'm gonna call it right now. <laughs> she does wear yellow a lot, and she does talk about bananas a lot. And we're just pointing out that she does it. And y'all are being weird by acting like we're crazy for just saying, damn, has anyone noticed that Nymphia wears yellow a lot? And oh, she come on, Bob. Come on. Talks to, and she talks about bananas a lot. What? Oh my God, Bob! You're being racist. Hmm, interesting. That's just that's just interesting to me. Fucking 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 black bitch. Yeah, I didn't say you call me a black monkey a monkey nigga. I said I I I got one of those DMs by some random fan oh. the other day, and it's been a while, so it felt like wow, you guys still see um, me. So what happened was um the lip sync. We find out that Plain Jane is the winner, and the bottom two are Morphine and um, I Sophia said that Cristal. already. You're not even paying attention to me. And um, they lip sync to a song by the guest called Miss Me More. I actually like that song. That was a good song. That's the thing. I keep I can listen to country music like one song at a time. I'm not going to go listen to her album, though. No shade, Kelsey. Um, I thought that this was a good lip sync. I think Morphine has proven she's a very good lip syncer. And I think Safira started the lip sync. Like, she was, I was very excited about what Safira was doing. But then she did, like, the split into, like, the pussy slamming on the floor thing that we've kind of seen her do a few times. So that didn't really excite me. But at first, I thought her being so reserved was very exciting. And then, but there is no way, unless the fur did not know the words, would the judges send her home on this lip sync? Like, are you kidding me? The bitch has four wins. Morphine has zero. The only way... Oh, so now you believe in track records. What? So now you believe in track records. I mean, this is not a lip sync for their... This is not, this is not a lip sync for the crown. But we but we had the same conversation 
about a lip sync for your life recently, and you were like, Where? no, it Where should who? be a lip sync no matter what. Well, who? Right here on this very podcast, when it was when it was Maya versus um someone she was against, uh Plasma. We had this ex- we had this exact same conversation on this very podcast about the same thing. And you were like, it should be about the lip sync. It shouldn't be about anything else, just the lip sync. And it should everything else should be wiped clean when it comes to the lip sync. Well, no. Except now that, you believe in track. That's workers. not that's not this is this is a different story. Bob, four wins versus zero is different. That that is so, so what, that is so not, what you're saying is that there is the same as where track records should come in. But I I think I think I think it's it's not it's not black and white. I think it's very gray. If it's two oh. lip syncs versus one, that's different than someone with four lip syncs versus zero. That is a different conversation. Hmm. I'm just saying it's interesting because you were saying they should wipe the slate clean. It should just be about the lip sync before. I think if it's if it's if it's when it's when it's a fair battle, right? If it's two versus one, that is different than someone who has won four episodes, never been in the bottom, versus someone who has won zero episodes and has been in the bottom four times. That is that is that is this against this versus this no. against this. That is different. It's just that you, it's just that you didn't say that. That's not you didn't say that last time. Well, so there I didn't was know you had that there was there was not this nuance, this new nuance to talk about it. This is a nuance. I just didn't know you had that caveat. You never, you never made it's that. It's not caveat. a caveat. It's the nuance of the whole topic. Of the whole okay, I didn't know you had the nuance. I didn't know you had the nuance. Nigga, I didn't know you was nuanced. And you still ain't nuanced. So, in the lip sync, Safira wins, which I agree she should have won. I think she did a better job. And I think it was just Morphine's time to go home. Morphine can't just lip. Who is she? Cameron Michaels? You can't just keep lip syncing until you get to the, to the fucking finale where well, you can I kill mean, bugs. Listen, Cameron is having a very hard time with ADHD. Leave Cameron out of this, okay? He is. He posted about that. Why? I have literally not said a word. <laughs> well, Since you said that, well, I, you I said you said the word with everything. I said that you said <laughs> you reacted. <laughs> so with that in mind, um, with that in mind, also when she went out, she was like, "Now nah, I'm going to pay for the second my second BBL." What did she talk about before she got a BBL? <laughs> well, apparently, I got the inside tea. The reason why it's such a big like, deal. Was, before, was she talking about getting a BBL? <laughs> well, the reason why, because I had to admit, I was someone who was like, girl, you got a BBL and that's all you got? Like, baby, I want you to be coming out here and be like, a waka cow. But apparently, bitch, Morphine was in the negative. She was in the red before. She was in the red. <laughs> that's why. Because <laughs> I was like, this BBL, I mean, it's a, it's BBL. I'm like, girl, when I hear BBL, I'm talking about, you know, but it's because it's, it is much improved from what it was before. Um, Did you see, did you, okay, are you at all following? Please tell me that you are following um, Mrs. Netta. Charles and Netta? Charles and Ms. Netta. Girl, they're such an interesting couple. I'm obsessed. Couple. I'm obsessed. Okay, what? where are you on the what, where, like? Are, are you just finding about finding out about them about like them? Baby, I have known about Charles Miss Netta since since she was since she was actually cooking. I knew about Charles Miss Netta back when she was cooking. I don't think this, this lady has cooked a, anything. Well, she doesn't identify as a woman. She just says I'm just Miss Netta, but she does use she and her pronouns. But I don't think she's cooked since fucking. It's been a long time. So I was there when she was going. Yeah, yeah. Charles. So now Charles and Ms. Netta went to okay. What you know? We'll talk about this on uh, on hey, the, on the the vision because I am I'm going to get an interview with Charles and Ms. Netta. I'm obsessed with them, and they're just so interesting to me. Well, that's the thing about social media. Social media has given us access to all these people and personalities that we never would have ever. It's it's just it's just a, it is such a wild time to be alive. Anyone with an internet connection can be that. Like it's just it's so crazy to think about. Anyway. So you remind me of this 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 guy's right name, Miss Gordon. This is someone at my every Tuesday named Miss Gordon. And I'm like, Miss Netta kind of looks like Miss Gordon, but she's younger than Miss Gordon for sure. Cause Miss Netta's like in her 40s. And I was in my 20s and Miss Gordon was in her like 50s. So Miss Gordon is at, by now in her either 70s or or whatever. That's not the point. The point is, just so you guys know, full disclosure, I don't want to lie to y'all. This untouched was not it. For it me. was it was why. So we're going to talk about a lot of other stuff in this in this Patreon exclusive, so you can get your money's worth. Because this untucked was not it. Yeah, no shade. Um, so we didn't say it. So yes, Mor- Morphine goes home, and she's been to the bottom four times. Hey, you know what? I think Morphine gave a valiant effort. Morphine, Mor- Mor- yeah. 
Morphine has been very enjoyable to watch. She's so funny in, in the confessionals, and she's definitely going to be one of the fan favorites this season. And I have enjoyed Morphine, and I can't wait to like meet and hang out with her and work with her in person. Yeah, she was a great. She was a great contender. She had she made for some great TV. She was really good in a lot of challenges. I think that her and Dawn kind of suffered the same fate. They were they were both good, but they just kept getting bested by someone else like every time morphine was shine someone else just shined a little bit brighter mm -hmm. every time dawn shines someone else just shined a little bit brighter you know what i mean yeah yeah it's the thor it's the it's the thorgy uh it's the thorgy condition damn you will find a way to make thorgy feel like shit shout out to tia coffee <laughs> <laughs> see all, later, all right y'all see y'all on patreon for the exclusive